Now, I'm moving to something else. Now, what does the brain have to do with, uh, with the bones? Well, we saw, and um, when I say we, this is uh, uh, work that uh, uh, we have been pursuing. Professor Itai Bab, who is a, a, a specialist in bones, and um, uh, Heather Bradshaw, that uh, works here, and Itai and Heather have a joint uh, uh, grant on that. Uh, and, Est and Esther Shohami, I mentioned that she's a specialist in uh, uh, brain damage. We saw that people that are in a hospital for a prolonged time because of brain damage, there are changes in their bone structures, very strange. We thought, well, maybe we saw that during brain damage there is a lot of 2AG being formed. Is it possible that this 2AG acts not only in the brain but also for some strange reason uh, acts on the bones as well? So look, let's look at the bones. And uh, we first, well not first, last looked at the CB2 agonists that we recently had and we saw that they definitely improve uh, broken bones or osteoporosis. There are two different things and I'll speak about uh, both of them. Next one, please. Now, uh, I assume that when people can't get to sleep uh, for some reason or other, they read government statistics. They can put anybody to sleep. So, um, uh, if you want to read statistics, Mediterranean statistics, the Greek government has come out with statistics showing that in Greece there is about 50% less osteoporosis, Greek women, than uh, in northern countries, Germany, Sweden, in Europe at least. Now, there was a paper following these statistics by a Greek group working at Harvard here, showing that this was due to uh, consumption of olive oil. The, um, the Mediterranean countries, in all Mediterranean countries, olive oil is used predominantly. Now, one of the compounds in olive oil is oleic acid. So we thought that maybe oleic acid has something to do with bones. Uh, now, why oleic acid? Because it's present in uh, olive oil, but also we have some something else. Now, this is, as I said, an andamite. Look, there are four double bonds, and there is ethanol. Now, this is the a compound I previously spoke, RAS, arachidonylserine. The difference is just a carboxyl group. Then, there is another compound, oleyl ethanolamine. Uh, ethanolamide, which is exactly the same as anandamide, except that it is derived from a fatty acid that has the one double bond, but otherwise it is, everything is the same. The one compound that's missing there is the fourth one, the derivative of oleyl, serine. Just so we thought, let's see whether this is the compound which our uh, body, our bones make from oleic acid, present in olive oil, and this is what causes, uh, 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 which is the reason why Greek women have less osteoporosis. Well, we prepared also a few others, but not too many. We are not a company that can produce 100,000 compounds and test them and find out. We have to try to do just a few syntheses. Money is not, uh, uh, and uh, people are not so, so available around. So we prepare the oleyl serine, uh, OS, if you wish, and try that one. And um, the, we, this was synthesized. It's easier to prepare that from in the lab rather than look uh, in the bones of the brain. And um, uh, we saw that uh, this compound, and this is part that uh, uh, Heather uh, sent us. This was done in her lab. Uh, she compared, uh, they compared their uh, the ion spectrum of the synthetic problem, compound found in brain and in bone with uh, uh, um, the natural compound found in brain and bone with the synthetic compound 
which we synthesized the next one and we saw that they are the same we saw that they are also the same in uh, all kinds of uh, other essays so uh, we found that uh, there is a stereochemical problem there amino acids uh, can exist in two forms we found that the form which is present in the body is the one that we could synthesize and so we had a compound oleyl serine OS and we looked with that compound to see what it does and uh, the Thai Babs lab and they are specialists in bone structures found that most definitely this compound is extremely active at a dose of 10 to the minus 11, 10 to the minus 12 mole, it uh, 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 helps uh, osteoblasts. These are the cells that produce uh, 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 bone and uh, uh, lowers the activity of the osteoclast that uh, 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 lower uh, uh, the formation actually these two, the, these two types of cells, the osteoblast and the osteoclast, work together and they, <clears throat> their equilibrium causes, uh, keeps our bones in a good shape. If one of them is not uh, uh, well equilibrated, then we have problems. In osteoporotic people, osteoporotic women, after the age of 50, unfortunately, most women have osteoporosis one way or another, then uh, there is the equilibrium there is not well maintained. Now we found that OS enhances osteoblast uh, action, lowers osteoclast action. And then we asked our pathologists to look uh, at controls and, and uh, uh, in bones and they found, yes indeed, that in the controls uh, there was a uh, uh, a lot of um, osteoclast, there were a lot of osteoclast cells, those that lower the production, and there were uh, much less of these cells when OS is administered. Uh, so, uh, Itai Bob decided to do a uh, trial in animals, and uh, so, uh, he worked very hard because uh, working with bones is difficult. Bones grow very slowly and uh, it is not so simple to do an experiment. If we make a mistake, then it takes many months to reproduce the experiment. But luckily, after a few tries, we found out how to do it. Uh, he has a model for uh, uh, osteoporosis. He uh, over your ectomized uh, mice, mice that have lost uh, their equivalent to uh, women at the age of 60, let's say, and they start to develop osteoporosis. And uh, uh, here you have the animals. The left one uh, shows the normal animals. The middle one, the red one, shows the animals that have osteoporosis, they have lost a lot of bone, but if after they have lost a lot of bone, after 42 days, these animals are treated with oleyl serine, the compound that was found uh, uh, by, uh, by our group, by Heather Bradshaw, to be present in bone. If we start administering uh, OS after 42 days, and wait and administer it every day, five milligrams per day, uh, we see that the day of 80, two months later, one month later, two months later, three months later, we see that the bone recovers. So here we have something which I believe is uh, a protective mechanism, the way our body protects itself from osteoporosis. And this may be one of the reasons why not all women after the age of 50 have the same type of osteoporosis. Most have only a mild osteoporosis, if any. Some have a lot. Now we have to look whether there are differences in the levels of uh, OS. Now, OS itself does not bind to either CB1 or CB2, but it is chemically very closely related to the compounds which uh, uh, 
uh, uh, do that. Next slide, please. Well, this is a summary of what I just said now. And uh, one uh, short pre uh, note uh, on an experiment that Itai Bab completed last week. Oh, no, now it's two weeks ago. Uh, he found that uh, bones of animals that have been broken uh, can recover much faster if they are given a mixture of THC and CBD. He took five milligrams per day, each of these two compounds, and administered them to the animals that had their uh, uh, legs broken. And he found that there was a 30% faster improvement of, uh, 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 of the healing of these fra fractures. If this is true for humans as well, I suppose that it will be a very practical way of improvement. After all, uh, we all break uh, some bo bone or other, especially when we are young and play football, or play basketball, or whatever we do. Uh, and uh, if this turns out to be correct, not only to be true, not only for mice, but only for also for uh, humans, then we have a simple way of getting uh, improvement or uh, getting a faster healing of fractures.